Okay, this is a case of a 40 years old male patient who presented with apprehension for the past few days. This was the ECG taken. Now let's look at the ECG. Considering the ECG globally, we can see that there are some changes which needs to be considered because there are some elevations over here. So considering the age and the presenting complaints, we always need to rule out acute coronary syndrome or myocardial infarction. Whenever we find this type of ECG, we always worry about the presence of ST elevation MI. Now the question arises, is this myocardial infarction or not? Now if we see the ECG in a hurry, we might miss some things and that is very important clinically in managing the patient and especially in this case as well. So now let me take you to the important finding which will help us in differentiating whether this is a myocardial infarction or not. First of all, we always need to see the ECG as a whole and that's why it is important to see if we even find some findings as well. So let's start with the P waves. Now what do you think these P waves look like? Well, we can see that these P waves are inverted in the inferior leads which are 2, 3 and AVF and these are upright in lead AVR. Now we should consider what's happening to this patient. Is this patient in sinus rhythm or not? So this shows that the patient is not having sinus P waves. So this is some other rhythm going on and that is an ectopic atrial rhythm. Now considering this rhythm, we can confuse these ST elevations with myocardial infarction. The phenomena is called Emery phenomena. So what is this phenomena? Let's discuss that. This phenomena is basically a differential of a ST elevation myocardial infarction and it presents as a pseudo stemi. Now we need to understand few basic concepts of the ECG. The atrial depolarization that is considered by the P waves and there is also an atrial repolarization that is not seen on the ECG because it is present within the QRS complexes and it's hidden. And these depolarization and repolarization is opposite. So if the depolarized wave is upright, the repolarization wave has to be inverted. And this concept applies to many places. Now, what we can see is that the sinus P wave has a upright P wave or depolarization. So by the principles, it has to be inverted the repolarization. So we cannot see that repolarization over here because it is present within this QRS complexes. Now few other points to remember is that the size of the repolarization is proportional to the size of the P wave and the shorter the distance of the PR interval the further out will be its repolarization. So this we mean that if this PR interval gets shorter by any means this repolarization wave moves to the right side over here. So in the case of sinus P wave the repolarization is inverted and hidden as seen over here and in the case of ectopic P waves which was our case in the inferior leads if it's inverted and these repolarization of this P wave will be upright okay and now if we can see that the PR interval if it is short over here which is it then 
the repolarization wave moves out and that's why we were seeing this wave which is embedded within the QRS as well as slightly moved out and that's why it was producing these ST elevation. So we always need to consider this concept and always we have to understand these principles before interpreting the ECG.